How to make YouTube videos fast, spending as little time as possible on it. I got my own videos that I didn't spend much time editing or doing at all. Uh, one of them got 1100 views with my subscriber base of less than 500 at that point. And another video of, like this, I gained 900 views. At that time I had l lower than, I guess, 300 subscribers. I tried everything, no editing, low editing, fancy editing. I've been a YouTuber with three channels and I run the third one right now. Now you can see that this method works by just going to other channels who are doing this. For example, Charlie Morgan, he blew up, I believe, without having a lot of stuff going on with his videos. For example, it's just him going around the house, him showing the whiteboard, and that is it. Another channel of Dylan Wilson is also doing pretty good on YouTube even though he has really low editing style. So it's just captions and also whiteboard and maybe some screen share. Denko, you know him, very low edited as well. And like there are plenty of channels that do that and they found success doing things low effort. So you know this is working. And by the end of this video, you will learn how to spend as little time as possible on video production and still make high quality videos and get views. Um, to prove it's working, this video will also be created with this framework. So I want to first start with the 2080 rule. 20% 20 of the things that you do bring 80% of the results and YouTube is no uh, different from that. And I want to tell you that video editing is not those 20% that bring you 80% of the result. It's just not. And here's the effort invested in the successful video. I learned that 30% of the success of the video is the idea, 40% is thumbnail and title, 15% and 15% the quality of the overall video. So this is how you should spend 20% of your effort to create 80% of the result on YouTube. Uh, I'll call it the Slacky Expert Scheme. <laughs> First, we start with scripting. I've been on different sides. Scripting word for word, bullet points, no scripting at all, all sucks. So choose what sucks less and do it. Seriously, it's pain in the ass for me. I don't know, maybe you like scripting. I know people who like writing, by the way. They have no difficulty writing, but I find it difficult, so here's what I do. Write your script as if you're talking. Say the sentences that you write out loud to make sure they sound natural and that they are easy to understand. At this point, you just vomit. You don't filter anything you say. If you need to research something at this stage, then do it at this stage. Add references to a script, maybe some links, photos, I don't know. If you come up with jokes, memes, write them down. Jokes make you likable. I promise that people like funny people. So this is an example of how my script looked like. It's just a notion page. I have some references that I found like of videos that I like, and then I just write. It's just plain text, minimum formatting. I just vomit. Okay. This is how much time I spent on word vomiting for this script. It's about an hour. Presentation, presentation. This could be a tongue twister. <laughs> First of all, why presentations are important is because if you don't edit your videos, you'll find that you'll need to make your videos engaging in another way. And one way of doing this is presentations. You can use apps like Canva. It has some pre-built templates that you can use Gamma. I'm using Gamma. You can look at what it looks like right now. And if you like this type of thing, then you can use Gamma. Google Slides, also just Google Slides. Everybody has that. Google Docs. I've seen even big entrepreneurs use the Google Docs, just the document with the text and with some photos as their uh, lead magnet. So use that for presentation Miro. I have to admit Miro mind maps and schemes that they offer tend to be more digestible. I mean, easier to understand and just look a little bit more engaging for people. I find that just by seeing how many views those Miro presentations can get. If you have a choice between text and graph, choose graph. So if you have photo, it's better to show a photo than just say what you mean. Okay. Here's an example of my mirror presentation of Denko's funnel. So yeah, this is what it looks like. I barely know how to use Miro. Honestly, it was my first presentation. It was some learning curve there as well, but I created it and it was a pretty decent video, I believe. Now you should also know that you could write your script directly in the presentation app, skipping, skipping the word vomiting part. It's just, I find two obstacles. First, the presentation app kind of puts pressure on you to make it pretty right away. So I unconsciously start formatting it. 
like add in different styles and boxes and whatever to make it prettier. And also, if I have a script in plain text, I can use it as a newsletter, blog post, Twitter thread, and it's a lot easier than, you know, bringing the presentation text back to the plain text. So if it doesn't happen to you, skip the first step and go straight to presentation. You can write your text word vomiting in presentation uh, right away. Also format your presentation, use hierarchy, like bigger texts, smaller text, the smallest text, use different colors and fonts to just spice things up to make uh, things more engaging because you don't have editing, right? So you need to make things engaging another way. Also, while creating, exclude unnecessary notes and rambling. Like if you say something out of topic and completely irrelevant that people will be bored with, then just cut that out. Prepare it to be shown to the public. So yeah, imagine that people will actually look at it. <laughs> while creating presentations, add photos, proofs, embedded links to the parts that need visualization. The more, the better. It's better to see it one time than to hear about it a hundred times. People are still visual creatures despite what copywriting gurus say. This is how much time I spend on presentation for this video. One hour, 40 minutes. Just so you understand the timeline that it will take. Edited videos still get better retention on average than unedited videos. Unless you're already famous. That is true. You can look at this retention that I edited. I mean, I edited the video and this is what retention looked like after I just added better editing. And if you aren't sure what's best for you, edited videos, unedited videos, presentations, or anything else, and you want somebody else to grow you on YouTube while you focus on your business goals, then you can book a call by the link in the description. Moving on to the Slacky expert scheme. So we talked about word vomiting, right? About presentation, presentation. When this all is done, you need to record your face and your screen share. Screen and face, let them trace. <laughs> I'm so funny. Yeah, what I mean by that is that when you show somebody something on the screen and people see your face at the same time, they can trace what you're talking about, right? They can follow you and this makes video more digestible and easier to understand. You can do this with editing, but you also can do this with your presentation and just walking people through what you are talking about. Record yourself while talking. These are the apps that you can use for recording. You can use OBS, it's free, I love it. QuickTime Player for Mac, I know that it's probably built in the Mac. Loom, you can use Loom. Riverside that offers crispy videos, but it may cost you some money. If you want a free version, use OBS. If you would like to pay and make it easier for yourself, I'd recommend Riverside. And Loom is just if you want to maybe give up some quality, but get some ease in, in your workflow. For better hooking the audience, you can film from an unusual usual place like a backyard or a balcony. I don't have that, but if you have this and you might just not think that you can use it for your background, then I encourage you to think about it. If you have a pretty place somewhere in your home, then use it. Not necessary though. Record yourself in the screen at the same time, going through the content of the presentation with the audience so they can follow you. This helps to digest the content 10 times better. Expand on the ideas that you present and do not hesitate to add personal anecdotes and jokes while filming. That's really cool. If you want to like lean away from your plot, then do that. Remember, I told you that you won't need editing? Well, I lied. Unless you're a really, really good speaker and you have plenty of experience doing that, you may want to cut out some parts like silences, ramblings, tottering, etc. But if you're a good speaker, you can skip the next step and just post. Cut the fluff, let's edit tough. No, why is it so funny? Apps that you can use for easy editing. You can use Riverside. It has like two buttons there. Really, if you don't need customizability, but having pre-built options, templates, and very easy interface, Riverside is what you need. If you like a little bit more customizability, you want to spice things up, you want to really like spend some time on refining your video, then CapCut is a great option. Love it. It's an amazing tool. I wonder why it's still free. It's a web app. For easy editing, also you can check out the video. So what exactly you should do? You should cut out silences, rambling when you go really off topic, stuttering, like some stupid nonsense that you might say 
from time to time. Add captions to the intro. This helps people who just see your video in the home feed realize what it what you're talking about and get hooked from the home feed right away. And it increases chances of them clicking on your video. Make sure the video is engaging at the start. Start is the most important part. Add photos to illustrate your points and you're good to go. This is only one way of making content and it took me this much time. I led this time when I added the video. If you want to spend even less time on your video production, download my free guide on how to go from zero to thousand YouTube subscribers in only two hours a week, uh, which I did with two of my other channels. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Bye.